Okay, let's see which camera. This one, that's the uh, Logitech C930E camera, USB webcam. Uh, this is Jim Howard. There's my picture. Uh, here I am too. Wow, we're twins. Yeah, we're good looking. Uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is May 11th of 2018. I've been busy around here. Uh, got the window open. The air conditioner. I got my door closed, but the air conditioner is going in the other room. Echo, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 90 degrees. Tonight, expect a low of 70 degrees. Uh, I've got the window open, so you may hear a dog barking. You might even hear some birds. I'm uh, not sure what you'll pick up. Earlier today, the aircraft were going over. We're close to a uh, Naval Reserve, Joint Naval Reserve, Reserve Air Base, which was Carswell uh, back when it was uh, fully operational. I guess it's fully operational now, but you know what I mean. Um, I'm in West Fort Worth. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that I bought a new, this is it right here, you can't see it, I can, a new 27-inch LG 4K monitor. And it took me over 24 hours to get the thing figured out how to do it. Um, I think I may have kind of covered it in uh, in the videos. I've now set it back to 1980 by 1020. Uh, I had a 27 inch monitor over here, Asus, and the last problem I had was when I would uh, click on, let's see, settings. When I would go to this, and then I would go to um, change the uh, scaling of what I didn't realize, you know, I would change the, but it would actually have, it would be, it would be over here. Well, because I had to move it for one thing because I couldn't see it. It was so, you know, so small, but I'd move it off of the, over to the other monitor. And it was just... pain uh, getting both of them set right. Uh, so I just set this new monitor to uh, back to, you know, to 1980 by 1020. Now I can still click on it and kick it into, let's see if I can see it here. Not sure if they'll show from this display. Is that resolution? No, it doesn't show here. So I have to go to uh, NVIDIA, let's see here, NVIDIA setting, there we are, and let's see here, okay, I don't want to mess with this again, uh, what actually what I have to do is change, well I'll go ahead, no I don't want to do it but since I'm recording and everything, I'd have to change the refresh rate to 30. And then the uh, settings for uh, 4K, which are 3840 by 2160, would show up. Um, but I can still, so I could watch um, 4K by just switching to 4K mode. I've watched a couple of little things, <coughs> part of a couple things. Uh, I wasn't impressed, but that may be because of the, you know, the video or the show that I was watching wasn't really filmed at the best or, you know, recorded at the best. Um, 
So having for my second monitor a 27 inch uh, Asus monitor, that didn't work out very well because I had installed the driver for the LG 4K. Finally, after it took me over 24 hours to get that installed and recognized. And LG, one of the things I have is this. You can see it on the screen here, the on screen. I think it might be covered by my, let's see, hang on a second. There it is, yeah. Um, whoops. I tried to change that. Let's see. Well, it's not changing right now. Anyway, the on-screen control. Let me move this back up. Maybe it wanted to be up there. So we have this uh, control box that pops up for LG. This is the on-screen control. And one of the things it does is gives me all these options, which I have off at this time, for this monitor. But what I did is I installed my wide monitor over here, the LG wide monitor. So I can go down here and change that to the L LG ultra wide monitor over here. And I can use these, you know, split screen and what have you over here also, or picture in picture. Uh, so they work, you know, they work with each other. And so it looks like for now I'm gonna have the LG 4K monitor, which I'm not sure I'm going to be using much 4K, and then the ultra-wide monitor next to it. On the ultra-wide monitor, when I'm making videos like I'm making now, I can have the uh, controls and things over here and other things that I want to drag over, but I can have the control over here and you don't see that. You're not going to see me going over here and let me see if I can change this picture which I just tried to do doesn't want to change so it looks like they're going to be stuck with uh, stuck with that camera it changed before something to do with me moving it or with a uh, uh, on screen control popping up or something must have messed with it um, nobody goes to my blog anymore and actually this is a uh, new blog that I'm working on. I just like messing with them, you know, and I have I have a bunch of other blogs that nobody goes to. I just like messing with them, trying the design, and, re and this is one I've been working on. I've been really upset over the last few days. I thought about making one. That, well, the other day it was uh, redstate.com. I can't remember now the comment that somebody made. It was a short a short thing about what were they talking about? But anyway, McCain came into it, and they really this is redstate.com is a right wing, in my opinion, hate site, and they really just made some nasty comments about McCain, and. It was very short and unnecessary, and remember, this is, I'm a liberal Democrat, you know, um, and it was like, I can't remember, I wish I could find it now. Um, the, like the last thing it said was uh, something to the effect of, well, we're not going to have to mess with him much longer. He'll be, he's going on. I can't remember. I wish I could remember. It was really two or three really nasty things for no good reason to do it. And uh, now we've got 
similar things being said and to the comments made for the one I just, uh, even that one I looked at when I just killed the current one. When you go down and read the comments, uh, there are this, you know, so it's so uncalled for for that. Um, and I'm not somebody that, I'm not one of these people that if somebody was a real, you know, asshole and, uh, you know, a bad person, I'm not saying that just because they die that you have to say something good about them. But on the other hand, why say something bad about them? You know, what's the, uh, you know, what's the purpose? So, uh, I didn't watch the SpaceX launch today. Wow, 14 year old boy is in custody after shots fired at a California school. I heard earlier today that sh they had somebody in custody, 14 years old. Teen shot in arm at the high school. Suspect in custody. We do have breaking news. Uh, da -da. Happened in Palmdale, Calif California. Wow. I, uh, I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. You know, I, I attended, uh, Cath uh, well, I attended Horseman Kindergarten, which was a public school. And then after that, uh, I attended uh, two Catholic grade schools. Holy Name and St. Vincent's, and then I went to a Catholic high school. Um, and I'm 77 years old. I graduated from grade school in 1955. I graduated from high school in 1959. Then after that, I you know I went to uh, real estate school. I went to a welding school in Cleveland, Ohio. I. Um, Went to Longview Community College many years later and Penn Valley Community College later and so forth and so on. Uh, but so far as when I was in grade school, we, we had no concerns with, you know, violence or anything. Didn't know any, I, well, I don't know how much the other kids knew, but I knew nothing about drugs or alcohol or um, sex, uh, just the same basically with high school. Uh, now I did live in uh, bad neighborhoods, um, especially during the high school years. The area went uh, to a bad neighborhood. My parents there are 35th and Garfield, 3510 Garfield, Kansas City, Missouri. They owned a old three-story house that had a basement. And uh, the area uh, started to be get, become black. And uh, my dad was one of the last to uh, you know, to move, and we, so, and I was going to high school, walking home, <laughs> in the beginning, you know, and, well, I got, I graduated in 1959, so, uh, the high school, Deedle Sound Military Academy, was down in uh, 18th Street, instead of, and I, we, I lived at 35th Street, so, I walked home sometimes from school through a black, neighbor, a black neighborhood, but that was before the 60s and things started to change. I got stopped a couple times and everything was okay, you know, no problem. Um, 
I think the one time several uh, colored boys my age asked me if I had any money for them. And I said, no, I don't have any money at all. And I, for some reason, patted my pocket, and you could hear jingle, jingle, jingle. And I said, what, you got money? And then I don't know where it came up. I mean, it was just, uh, I said, oh, I got to pick up the cleaning for my mother. And, you know, the one boy turned to the others and said, oh, he's got to pick up the, uh, he's got to get the cleaning for his, you know, his mother to leave him alone. Uh, after the 60s, I and anyway, also, four days a week I was in, when I was going to school, I was in uh, the standard, you know, uniform. Uh, it was an ROTC school and a Catholic school. And then on Friday I would have been in, I don't know how many days I walked home. I usually took the bus home took the Vine Street home. You, you know the song, uh, um, Kansas City, whatever, going to Kansas City, going to go into 18th and Vine, going to get me a bottle of Kansas City wine, something like that. So I rode the Vine Street bus to and back from school. And I was the only white person on the bus. Maybe the white, maybe the bus driver was white. I rode the. Uh, I was the only kid on there, or only white kid on, only white person on the bus. And never had any problem. But um, on Friday we wore our dress uniform: white shirt, uh, all that sort of is a dress uniform. So I'd have really been a target, but graduated from school in 1959, really, you know. But uh, later in life, I ended up working in some of those areas, in the black areas, uh, for quite a bit of the time. When I worked at St. Joseph Hospital, 1970, starting in 1972 or whatever, that's when rioting had happened right before that, and the it's a Catholic hospital, the nuns were terrified. Well, the employees who worked there, because they were able to look right out the window of the hospital and see the rioting going on, cars being set on fire, and all types of things like that. And uh, it was a really bad neighborhood. But I, I worked there, I think, three and a half years. Uh, you know, every morning, I would see the people going to work, you know, waiting at the bus stop. Uh, and it would be, it was cold sometimes, you know, freezing, wind blowing, ice, blizzard or whatever. And in the morning for a couple of hours, depending on where I was working, if I was inside, then I was in, if I was outside, then I'd have to take a Cushman scooter down and to an entrance gate for the employee parking there. And they had an electrical outlet and I could, plug a heater that was built in, electric heater, but didn't do any good. I mean, you could, I could maybe keep my hands, but I'd be right there, you know, next to the sidewalk, and there'd be a bus stop right there, and I'd talk to some of the people, and I mean, I'd see them every day going to work and see them sometimes coming, you know, coming home from work. Uh, now, before I went to work doing hospital security, my had several jobs. Well, I was a welder for years and years. Uh, when I got married, my wife and I, well, actually before we got, well, no, we got, she had uh, decided that she was going to start a tropical fish shop, and she did. The uh, first time, she was 18 and I was 26. The first time I, when I called her for a date, uh, she didn't really uh, want to date a 26 year old man she was 18 and then she used as an excuse which was you know true I said you know why don't I come over pick you up and let's go to a movie drive-in movie do you know what drive-in movies are <laughs> um, and uh, she said well I've got to fill these tanks with fish tanks with water so or maybe I went on over drove on over and her mother was there 
uh, filling the fish tanks with water. And I went on in and I said, let me fill the tanks and then you can go to, uh, so I filled the tanks and then we went to a drive-in movie together. Uh, we saw Fantastic Voyage or whatever where they shrink a guy down and then inject him into a human body for some reason. That's what the movie was. Um, now, why did I get on this subject? I am an amateur radio operator, by the way, and uh, there's so much stuff you can do with World Wide Web, with the Internet, and with Android phones and all that type of stuff. Uh, but there is also a lot of stuff you can do with uh, amateur radio. You ought to check it out sometime if, uh, if you have the time. It's, um, it's a great hobby and a great interest. A lot of stuff you can do. You can communicate with uh, the astronauts on uh, the International Space Station. You can uh, do television, amateur radio television. You can communicate with a handy talkie. You can let's see where my that's not here around here. You can uh, I'm gonna try to change this picture again. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, go to the. I think it's changing. Okay, it changed. Uh, there's just so much you can do with amateur radio. I have the beginning. You don't need to learn Morse code, by the way, anymore. Uh, I would never become an amateur radio operator because I just could not learn Morse code. It just might have something to do with my hearing. Maybe because the hearing is different, and, and maybe if I had tried just, you know, listening in one ear, I don't know, what the, but I just couldn't learn Morse code. But um, you don't need to learn code, Morse code, and the uh, that's put away too. And, if I pull out the book, the next step, the, the, big, the, the it's very easy. Uh, I got several people started, you know, and one police officer just came over, used my computer to go to a test site, and he, for I think a day, maybe a, just wasn't long, he saw what he missed, and then he just kept doing it and doing it, then I went with him and he took the test and he passed. Um, but there's also, of course, a book you could buy for the tech. That would be the beginning thing. Um, and then the next step is a general class, and it's not that difficult. And I have the book, which I've never opened, but I also, as you can see, in <laughs> 2014, and before that, I had paid, uh, and I never go to the site. Uh, and it's now expired. 2018 I because I'm doing other things I'm always interested in doing things but I really would like to get my uh, general class license because I'd have access to more bands although with everything you can do uh, digital APRS just so much you can do just having the standard tech license is but I still want to get the job. I just don't have, well, two, I'll spend time playing some Civilization Five or Civilization Six, and I should be studying for the test. But uh, check it out sometime if you're, if you're interested, you think. Let's see, let me go to YouTube Studio. Let's go there. Uh, oh, ouch, ouch. Okay, the video I made yesterday, uh, yeah, got 33, 33 views, seven comments. You can see I do not get a lot of views. I, I would never stop making YouTube videos. But I, I would like to just change my attitude and, and not feel like I have to make 
a video uh, and just make a video when I have something really uh, because I mean I've been doing it since YouTube I was one of the first YouTubers I was doing it before YouTube existed and uh, I obviously just do not have uh, do not, don't cover the subjects and things that people are are going to beat a path to my door. So, I don't, really, I just should continue to make videos, but just make them and and try to do. I should try to do better. Try to. Um, I don't want you know. I just don't want to have a ton of people, but I would like to make videos that people did, you know, did like. You can see I've turned off monetization on uh, quite a few of these videos here. I, I get about $30 a month from YouTube. I spend more than that a month just on things, not counting, you know, Six hundred dollar cameras and uh, uh oh, floating tripod. Uh, you name it, you know. It would be nice to uh, bring in enough that I actually came out a little bit ahead. That would be nice. make you feel like more of a success or something. I just recently after, I think YouTube started, I think in 2005, it's now 2018. And I was, I started in 2005 and uh, I now have 2,500 subscribers. This is really neat. I like quality items. Let's see. I ordered this today from New Egg, a uh, UPS unit. It'll uh, help and I worry every time when we have storms that come through and when they get the power surge and whatever, so I ordered one of these in, and it'll be here in a week or so. Uh, I really, I, I'm not going to try to, you know, I never have tried to run, I used to have UPS, you know, units, but the last one died a couple, few years ago, and I just didn't replace it, but it's not that I want to, to sit here and keep doing stuff. It's just that I want, especially the surge protection. I just hate it when you lose power and then the power comes right back up. You just get a small, you know, uh, surge and, and uh, that's hard on electronic equipment or whatever. So I've got that coming. Shouldn't be any problem, you know, hooking everything up to it. And two, I've got, and I use ties, to, you know, I've got the plugs in the wall, which also have some surge protection in them. And of course, nowadays they have a couple USB ports too. And then I come off and have an extension, you know, laying over here and I use a tie to tie it off to a leg. And have a, runs over here, have a extension over there and have it tied off. And actually it's running up on the leg a little bit tied off of the table, so. guess that pretty much uh, winds it up. I And I was advised to, you know, of course, when I make up my mind, I want something, you know. I really wish now I probably hadn't got the 4K monitor because, but what will happen, something will happen next week or next month or six months from now. And this, I'll, you know, end up, uh, 
there's three of us adults living in this two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. And my room is packed with, you know, it has a bed and just big desk and computer equipment. And uh, well, computer equipment, that's some ham, little bit of ham radio equipment. And uh, there just isn't much room. Um, thinking, I've been just thinking about just getting rid of some stuff that if I could. There's a chest of drawers over there. And I got clothing that I never use in the top two drawers. And in the top or the bottom two drawers, there's hard, computer hardware, or cables, power supplies, all types, you know, all types of stuff. Um, a lot of cables, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Maybe a, amateur radio operators at the various clubs and stuff, they have, you might check in your area for an amateur radio club, you know, contact them online or whatever, or just check online and they, just about every place has ham fest or whatever and hams all go there and they'll have tables set up and they'll sell stuff, but they sell a lot of computer equipment and other technical type stuff and ham radio equipment and there'll be dealers there or whatever. Um, and I had a table one time in Kansas City, Missouri and I sold, of course I sold it cheap, you know, and people were just, at the end of the day, I forget how much I had, hundred dollars or something like that, but I sold everything uh, really cheap. But uh, I was working hospital security at that time and the guy who had the table next to me had printer, the old printers, you know, uh, what do you call them, impact printers, uh, dot matrix or whatever, had them stacked up. They all had a tag on them with the hospital name that I worked at. I remember when those things were down in the basement and uh, the hospital for a long time behind, you know, and I remember when somebody, I don't know if it was him or he, maybe he got them from somebody else, but somebody showed up, you know, they had bought them very inexpensively. And I had a friend that worked at one hospital, St. Luke's, and they gave him, when they went to a large hospital, when they went to new computers for the hospital, they gave him all the computers and the monitors. On a lot of the monitors, though, uh, that's before LED, you know. A lot of the monitors, the screen had been burned in, you know, with dietary department or some other department, their menu or whatever. And he gave me two or three monitors and two or three, uh, you know, computers. But they were very, you know, minimal basic because the hospital, you know, was just using them like terminals. We're tied into them, just using the terminals. I forget if they were, you know. Um, 286, 38, I don't remember, they, but they were, you know, but, but anyway, yeah, you might look for a ham radio club that's having, a, and go there and enjoy it, they give away, they have a drawing, you buy a ticket to get in, they have a drawing, give away some expensive, you know, uh, things, I've never won any, well, I didn't go up to all that many, uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching.